Just a reminder that tomorrow, Friday, we will start having public masses again at 15% capacity. For Sunday masses, you need to pre-register, but not for weekday masses. But once we reach our capacity of 75 people, we have to shut the doors. Also a reminder that we have been live streaming our masses on a daily basis. Part of the reason is that the technical people involved, uh, those who are assisting to make this possible, they're available early in the morning, which is 7.30 when we have the mass. But once we go back to the regular schedule, they will no longer be available. So we'll only be live streaming on Sundays. We will still make the daily homily available, but it won't be live streamed. So it won't be available until later in the day. In regards to today's readings, I wanted to point out that sometimes as Catholics, some Catholics think that because they are Catholics, that they will be saved. And there was actually a time in, in the church when people, you know, there was this opposition between Catholics and non-Catholic Christians, the Protestants, and it's kind of like the Catholics thought that they're the righteous ones, that they're the ones who are saved and everyone else is, is not saved. And of course, that's not a good view to have. So, God desires the salvation of everyone, and therefore God must make it somehow possible. But it is true that when we have the fullness of all the things that God has given us, such as we have in the Catholic Church, our chances of making it to heaven and to attain to a high degree of glory in heaven are much, much more better. But just because we are Catholic does not mean that we are saved. And in fact, when we look at the news, we know that there are you know various politicians who claim to be Catholic, but in reality, they reject like the most obvious Catholic beliefs and, and oppose those Catholics beliefs. And, and so they cannot really claim to be Catholics in good standing. So the point is that just because we are Catholic it doesn't mean that we are saved. And in fact, this is the view that many of the Jewish people had that because they were part of the chosen race, part of the chosen people of God, that as long as they didn't commit like a major sin like murder, that they would be okay. And that's not true. And, and our Lord makes this obvious in, in, his, in his preaching. I mean, consider even today's first reading from Paul's letter, his second letter to the Corinthians. Notice what he says. To this very day, whenever Moses is read, and where was Moses read or, or the, 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 the first five books are attributed to, to Moses, the first five books of the Bible. So, of course, this would have been read in the synagogue. So he's, this is, he's addressing the Jewish people. He's talking about the Jewish people. So to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over the minds of the Israelites. Not the Gentiles, not other people's. A veil lies over the minds of the Israelites. In other words, they, they hear the scriptures being read. Maybe the, the, uh, the rabbi in the synagogue would have explained the scriptures and taught them, but it's kind of like they were blind. There was this veil over their eyes, not just in regards to, you know, St. Paul proclaiming Christ, but in, in regards to so many other things. And, and Christ points this out. So he talks about the, the Pharisees. So he says, for I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And do people at that time looked up to the scribes and the Pharisees because they were the ones who were very serious about the practice of their faith. But what is our Lord getting at? Our Lord is saying, well, the Pharisees outwardly, yes, they appeared to be very good. They made a show when they were fasting. They made a show of saying their prayers in public. They did all the right things. They tied. They did all these things externally. But as our Lord points out in another place, they neglected the weightier matters of the law, such as charity, true love and compassion for their neighbors. And so they were just kind of going through the motions. Their heart was not in it. Their heart, in their hearts, that they did, they did not love God as much as they should have. If they did, they would have loved their neighbor as as well. 
Now, notice what our Lord is, goes on to say. Now, if you recall, yesterday we had the passage where our Lord says, you know, he has not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Not one tiny aspect of the law will be done away with. And what he's doing today in today's gospel reading, our Lord is basically extending the law or extending our understanding of what the law entails. And he's just addressing one particular commandment here. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder. It's one of the commandments, thou shalt not kill. And he goes on to say, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. That's understandable. But then he goes on to say, but I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So what our Lord is saying is, okay, yes, it's wrong to commit murder. It's wrong to kill someone. But simply being angry with someone, that's very bad. And to um, insult someone, that. That's even worse, he's saying, because now you're outwardly manifesting your anger, your hatred, your dislike of that person. And to call someone a fool. Well, you know, sometimes people today, we we tend to use that term, oh, he's so foolish or whatever. People, maybe at the time of our Lord, thought it a far greater offense or, or an injustice to call someone a fool. So our Lord is is basically telling us that we will be accountable to to God before the judgment of God for every thought, word, um, uh, deed, or omission. In other words, when we sin, we sin in thought, word, deed, or omission. It's not just the deeds that we commit. It's not just murder, but it's also our thoughts. The words that we speak, we can cause so much harm with our words. You know, there's a story of of one of the um, desert monks. And often in the early church, the the desert monks, they did not know how to read and write. So there's a a new desert monk who comes in. This is an actual story. It's not just a parable, but he he comes to, you know, the elder monk and and he says, you know, give me a passage to, to meditate on. And usually the monks would meditate on the Psalms or various passages of scripture. But the ones who didn't know how to read, they were just given a passage. They were kind of expected to memorize that passage, to meditate upon it. And then they would come back to the elder elder hermit or, or monk, and, and they would go off again, and they would meditate on, on more passages of scripture. So there's this story about one particular hermit. They, they were hermits at that time. So he comes to the elder hermit, and the, the passage he's given is, is from one of the Psalms, and it's about controlling our lips. And so the, the her, hermit goes off uh, into his uh, solitude, into his isolation, and many months go by, and, and the elder hermit is wondering, you know, why hasn't he come back to get another passage? And more months go by, and eventually the elder hermit is, is concerned, so he goes looking for the, uh, the, uh, the novice uh, hermit, and, and he finds him, and he says to him, you know, why didn't you come back? to get another passage. And he said, because I'm still working on what you gave me. And now granted he was a hermit, so he wasn't communicating with people. So it wasn't that hard for him to control his his lips or his mouth. But even in his mind, he understood that so often he had negative thoughts towards people in in his past. And he realized that he needed to overcome that. And so he, he worked on this one particular passage from the Psalms for a very long period of time. And we tend to say things often without even thinking about it to offend others. And, you know, how many people hold a grudge? How many people are angry? And our Lord is saying, this is very serious. And there's other passages where our Lord says that unless we forgive, we cannot be forgiven. And we tend to overlook the seriousness of these things. And this is why we need to consider that unless our righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, we will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's our Lord's words. 
So the ideal is that we are filled with love, love for God and love for neighbor. And that's not an easy task to do. And yes, sometimes people offend us and our inclination is to be angry, to be vengeful, to, to kind of try to get back at them. But that's not what our Lord says to do. He says to forgive, to be understanding, to be compassionate, to love those who offend you, to pray for, for those who offend you, to pray for your enemies. This is what it means to be a true follower of our Lord. And this is what all of us are called to do. And left to ourselves, we cannot do it because we have a fallen human nature. We're we're inclined to sin. We're inclined to be angry, to be proud, to be vengeful. But when we have the spirit, when we ask God to help us, then it becomes easier. And with the help of God, we can do it. We just have to make the effort. 